This is going to be a short buyer's guide for the R107 series Mercedes-Benz SLs designed from and built from 1971 to 1989. And we're specifically going to be focusing on the 560 SL, which is built from 1986 to 1989 and was the last of the production series. We're going to go over some of the common things to look for in these cars when you're buying them. Um, what are acceptable prices and values for the cars depending on mileage and what are some common issues they should look out for when you're going to look at your car. So this car here is a 1986 560 SL and it is it is red, signal red to be exact, with a Palomino tan interior color combination. So this color combination is regarded to be as practically the most desirable if not one of the most desirable color combinations for the car. Now, what makes the 560 SL the 560 SL is of course its engine. This car has a 5.5 liter V8 making 230 horsepower, which is quite an improvement from the 380 SL, which only made about 150 horsepower. This particular example has 60,000 miles on the engine. Now, if you'll note here, there's a cover missing over here, which is for the bare air conditioning. And it's just a little black protective cover, which I like to see on these cars. I will insert a picture of what it's supposed to look like. Now it's extremely common for many, many, many of these cars to have this, to, to uh, sorry, to not have this. Um, it's not really something that I worry about. It doesn't affect the car in any way, shape or form. I just like it because it's more aesthetically pleasing. Now, what is good about this car is it does have original stickers on the car. That's the, for the radiator. The car is equipped with SRS seatbelt airbag, emissions information, you've got your data card here, and your AC, which is not converted on this car to R12 yet. What you may notice under here is a deteriorated hood pad, which someone else has previously removed off the car. Um, this is extremely common for any vintage Mercedes, it doesn't matter the year, whether it's 1972 or it could be even an early 90s car, such as a 91.560 SUC. They all have the same type of hood pad that deteriorates over time and will need replacement. It, and it's common to see, as this car has done, people, they will cover, your, cover their engine and they will um, scrape off with like a putty knife or, you know, an ice scraper. You know, the remains of it. it. It really deteriorates and you can, you know, touch it with your finger and it just becomes all, all dusty. You can see here. It's fairly common to see this happen to any of these cars. This is your coolant reservoir and because of the age, plastic parts do tend to become old and brittle and sometimes they do discolor. Now this is pretty common for this car, um, 560 SLs as well, and you can also see that the windshield washer reservoir has the same issue going on. Something that sets out the 560 SL apart from the rest of the R107 series is the fact that this car comes equipped with ABS and an airbag. So you can see here is the ABS pump. So if you are looking at a 380 SL, some of the points that I'm going to mention will be of use to you, while some others may not be of use, such as the ABS pump. You will only see the ABS module on a 560 SL and some of your 500 SLs. Um, 380 SLs don't have this, neither will the 280 SL or the 450 SL, though all of them do come equipped with disc brakes. Now a common upgrade that you will see happen to these cars is a European headlamp housing with the US bumpers. Um, the European headlights have a way better light output than the US cars, and they are worth considerably more than the seal beam units. Some people do prefer the look of the US spec headlights although they were not originally designed to be on this car. They were a US Department of Transportation requirement to have two sealed beam headlamps. So I will insert a picture of how these are supposed to look like. And the common upgrade that people will do is they will replace the sealed beam headlamps with Hella lamps, which are way better light output than the sealed beams. So this car does come with the European lights, and as you can see, they are flush with the body. There's no discoloration in the turn signal lenses which is good as you can often see as the turn signal lenses discolor and they'll either become darker or lighter depending on where they've been sitting. 
Now, something that is not as desirable on this car is to have the US bumpers. Although original to the car, the short bumpers that are seen on European models and early 450 SLs are a lot more popular as an upgrade and make the car worth a little bit more money. One part that is unique to the 560 SL, 500 SL, and 300 SL 6 cylinder, which is not commonly seen, is this lower splitter. A 380 SL will have it, as well as a 450 SL, but it is just a rubber dam, versus this is a whole painted unit. What I do like to see on any 107, it doesn't matter what year it is, I love to see the aluminum wiper lines that is of these cars. I think that it just makes the value of the car, just you know, to look at it, it makes it a lot more pleasant. What people will do, because they cannot either find these rubber inserts for the wiper blades or whatnot, they will just put on whatever Walmart, you know, Walmart Canadian Tire, they'll just put on generic windshield wipers. So I think that these sleek wiper arms really make the car look just so much better. Now something unique to the 560 SL, as mandated by the US Department of Transport, is a third brake light, which is kind of an afterthought. Actually, it was an afterthought in the design, and it only came out in 1986. So the 1986 and 87 cars, such as this car, will have a big unit. It's a little more clunky, and it's towards the middle of the trunk, versus the 88 and 89 560 SLs will have a thinner third brake light over here. common rust spots that you will find on these cars is you will see bubbling around the rear quarter over here on the rear fender. Sometimes you'll see rust starting just above or below these um, rubber side trims over here and that's because there are these holes that this piece clips into so you'll see rust happen around there and also these cars are notorious for rusting around the jack point over here. They will rust in here and often you will find a piece of rust, a bubble starting around here, sometimes around here, around here. Now the hood on this car is made of aluminum and this was starting with the 380 SL, aluminum hoods were standard and it's very light in comparison to it, the steel counterpart. These do not rust, but they do tend to bubble up. Sorry, corrodes because it's aluminum. Sometimes they will bubble up. This car has none of that, which is good. But you do want to be careful when you open or close the hood on the car because it's aluminum. What I like to do is when, when the hood is popped, it's my door shut. When the hood is popped, I don't like to slam the, the to slam the hood. But rather, I'll just push on the Mercedes sign downwards and close. Since we're still on the topic of rust here, I'd like to make a note that a lot of the times if you find a car that has been sitting for a while with the hard top on, or let's say that it's got a broken rear window or a faulty seal, which do happen on the hard tops, especially broken windows since people don't generally use them and they'll just store them in their garage or somewhere where it can easily get damaged. So a lot of the times what will happen, especially if the car's been sitting outside, is rain will seep its way into the car, either drip down, and then underneath this parcel shelf over here, water will slowly start to, to pile up as it, it is as an incline. Now some of the cars would have jump seats in them, and you will see the large formations of rust around here, here, basically and underneath this par parcel shelf completely. You have to check for rust. As well, I've removed some of the carpets on one side to show you what a floor should look like. And you do not want to find any rust in there, as I do recommend taking out the carpets during any pre-purchase inspection to examine for rust in this area here, as well as in the floors. As you can see, this is a really solid car. No rust over here. It's solid. You can't hear any Bondo, just metal. This will be a good example. As for the interior of this car, what is really common is to get fading in the Palomino leather if the car's been in the sun a lot. As you can see on this car, it's sort of pinkish and bleached out. 
on this top area here where the tonneau cover is and up the top of the headrests. Now what it should look like is what this door presents its color to be. And this is the correct color for Palomino. And as you can see, it is matching. Looks a little green here because I've got the flash on because I'm in a parking garage, but this is indeed how it should look like. What is extremely common for these cars of the Sierra is to have an upgraded radio. A lot of people upgraded the radios when they were brand new. And the sound system, since there's only two speakers, one here and one over here, and they will rather cut two holes in the back parcel shelf and have these two large objects protruding from the rear parcel shelf area, which I highly recommend against buying a car like that just because it kills the value of the car. Um, not only the value, it doesn't really, I guess it wouldn't kill the value per se, but it would really kill the appearance of an original car. And, you know, it's really hard to find a parcel shelf like that and you have to go to an upholstery shop. So I would recommend if you are buying a car that has an upgraded sound system, just have the speakers upgraded, no holes cut in the rear parcel shelf. As you can see in this particular model, this does have a color difference in wood veneers. Um, this looks like it's been refinished to me. This is just my personal opinion. Um, it's not holding up as well. This is what the wood should look like. This you know, it may be a little faded because of the age, but this is really what it should look like. You want to check your steering wheel for any obvious wear. That will tend to show a high, higher mileage vehicle. Um, 560 SLs do have an airbag over here, which is great. 560 SLs also have this knee bolster uh, cushion sort of thing, which I think is a really great addition to the car safety wise. Some cars did have the control listings underneath here. Some cars did not. Um, I, I've seen some later cars that do have this, some earlier cars that don't have this. This is an earlier car, so it does lead me to believe that this part has been replaced. So over here you've got your basic controls, you've got defrost, um, by level which will send air to your feet, um, top area and, um, these vents over here. Then you've got normal which will send most of the air to your feet economy which is for air conditioning um, the off switch fan low automatic high and you've got recycled air which is just for the 300 SL um, and 560 SL models basically 86 to 89 um, you've got a rear window defrost and there's a plug that plugs into the hard top so that you can have that option along with your antenna up down um, you've got your lighting controls as there are lights up here map lights um, and then lights in the foot well over here we're just having some work done there um, with the fuses, so I have that removed. As well as you can see here when I close this door, this light should turn out as it does. You see it turns on and off. What's all too common on 560 SLs is to have a cracked dash. Now, this dash only has one hairline crack around here, which is acceptable for a low mileage car but you will see some cars crack here, crack here, crack here, crack here. Over here, this is a Canadian car, so you do have unleaded fuel only in French and in English. You've got your handbrake release over here, and then you've got your lighting controls, so two to the right, headlights. And you've got first parking light, which is on this side, the second parking light is on this side. The idea of this is if you're parked on a street parallel, if your left end is sticking out, you can have this on. Now, a good sign that this car has been properly maintained is that it still has the most accurate mileage sticker from the oil changes, which would be um, outlined in the maintenance booklet. And this car is at 108,000 kilometers, so just above 60,000 miles. And this was the next service stamp, so 60,000 miles. So this car does show to be well maintained. Some cars have the rare heated seat option which my other 560 SL does have. This one only has the windows, window switches, and of course, the passenger side power mirror, along with your hazard switch. And you've got a cigarette lighter in here, which has off the cigar lighter actually in your ashtray. Now typical wear areas that you will see on the seats as this car does have, is in the driver corner over here. So this does look like it needs to have, uh, to be attended to. 
you will also get wear from the seat belt rubbing against the seat around here. Around here. And specifically, let's put the seat belt over here for a second. Um, sometimes the seats, they don't really hold and they will sort of go back and hit against here, which will then cause some deformation in the seat, which this car has obviously seen. Now these cars do come equipped with vacuum door locks. So when you lock the car, you should hear, um, you know, all your doors should lock. So passenger and driver door along with the trunk and your gas cap will lock. So you will hear a little hissing sound if this is locking. So let's lock it for a second. You'll hear the doors lock as well. Unlock. And the gas cap is opened. Now these sun visors are often a common failure with this one they don't hold. Like we see this one will fall a little bit. This is throughout all the models. Um, 560 SLs differ from other models that they do have this interior dome light. So you can see yourself while you're using the mirror. 15 inch wheels also come standard on the 560 SL and 300 SL models. An original toolkit just to me would seal the deal of a really original car. This has seen better days, but it's still nice to see that it's over here manufactured by Mercedes Benz Canada Inc., proving this is a Canadian car. You know, there's still everything in here. Not that we would want to use any of these band-aids. I don't think they would hold, but this is a good example of what it should be. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to put the top up and down on the car, um, what to do when you are putting down the roof, and how to inspect it for shrinkage or wear. So first you'll want to put down these sun visors over here. And you will take this lever here, push it down, which will then open up the Toronto cover. You're going to want to grab from about the middle of the car, lift it over, and ensure that this fits properly into the two locks. And you'll want to push this back. It's hard to do with one elbow here. Um, push this back, push the tonneau cover down, press and hold it to lock it, as well as the other side. So you don't have any rattling while the car is in motion. Now a common tip that I tell people when they're folding their hard tops when they're putting, this, sorry, the soft top down is when you are lifting this up, you see how it, it crinkles in here. You want to make sure this is flat along within here so you don't get over time any wrinkles that are permanent to the glass. So now that we have the top down, we are going to push this in here slightly and the latch will here itself inside. This is a brand new soft top. Um, I don't think it's even seen about 200 miles of ambient outdoor conditions. Uh, it's been sitting for a little while, so the glass is, uh, needs to be cleaned. But you see the soft top. It will often leak in these seams over here, which is not really nice when you're driving through a rainstorm. If you get caught and want to have your top leaking, they will also leak through the seals over here, so you want to make sure that that is all in good order. So now that we are in here, we're going to insert this key, which is specific to R107 models. They are universal, they'll fit any car. You are going to want to twist to the right to unlock it to the opposite direction. Twist this to the left, opposite direction. Pull this out. Sometimes they are a little bit difficult. I like to keep the key in here in the store pocket. And then, it's really hard to show, so let me open this up. To finally latch this back mechanism over here, you pull this towards you, and now it is locked. Now I do want to note, you it's best to do this procedure when the windows are down or if the doors are open um, to get the best fit for the top. So. Let's close these doors now. It's a nice seal on the car. This is a good example, as it has not had any accidents. All the doors are very flush to the car. The fender gaps are, are great on the car, um, along with the hood gaps. And I don't think it's had too much paint. The only area that I know that's been repainted is 
below over here. Um, so you see it's nice flush fitting with the rest of the car. The window is in a pretty much a straight position and everything fits nicely onto the car. Everything is sealing up here. So this would be a good example of what it should look like. This car has the correct sticker. The trunk lock will also lock and unlock the doors. This is in the correct position here. Some cars have it over here, um, but that's not, as long as it's there, that's what's important. Now, what is really problematic on these cars is the power antenna. The mast fails and these are no longer available, so you would have to get a Hirschman International, or Hirschman, Hirschman Universal Unit. Um, these seals do tend to fail and they're really cheap for Mercedes, so I just, I see whenever I got the car, I just changed this seal. Um, this is probably the best thing to do because if you've got an old seal, or no seal at all for that matter, you'll have water leaking into here and just creating rust, which is not something that you want. You want to check under here for bubbling, rust, anything like that. Also, often these cars will rust from the inside outwards, especially with the chrome and underneath the parcel shelf there that we discovered. In the trunk area, you will want to look at your battery tray, which is located inside here. You'll see a little caution area. There should be a toolkit in there, which this car unfortunately does not have, along with little lid and once you open that you won't find the battery enclosed. Common issues that I find on the engine is that these are notorious for timing chain issues where they will rattle for about 15 seconds when the engine starts. Um, apart from that, you know, it could either be a stretched timing chain or the guide rails, which are not too expensive of a fix. Sometimes you will want to inspect your idle air valve as it can be malfunctioning, and results of this will probably be an increased idle RPM when the car is in park, or sometimes what you will find is that the idle is too low at 500, and um, you know when you let go off of the accelerator pedal, it will just shoot back to idle. Uh, that seems to be a common issue. The way that you can distinguish 560 engines from older engines is that the 560 has black valve covers where the other ones would have um, cast aluminum. The 560SL air cleaner is different from a 560SCC air cleaner in the regard that this car has one air dam coming from the front grille over here, while an SCC will have another air dam going on this side. Um, this is probably for space reasons why this car does not have it. Upon starting the car, you do want to see that the car starts up nicely. When you shift the car, you do not want to have any obnoxious shifts. Now, you want to check on the shifter when you're shifting it. The bushings may be worn if it is very, very easy to shift. Now let's turn on the lights on the car and we can examine what it should look like. So I'll turn, touch a turn signal. And we can, we can see overall how it should look like. So you want to have your side markers here along with your turn signal. These are the standing lights as you can see on the side as well. Now the European lights, they do look, um, I think they, they look nice on the car. Well, thank you for watching my, this video of, of the R107 Buyer's Guide for the 560SL engine. And as a final note, we will listen to the gracious horn on this car, which is a dual note horn. You'll have a high note and a low note, which I think is very suiting to the car.